Hello Vinyl community! <clears throat> so uh, I, I would like to start this with a little shout out to the YouTube channel Calico Silver, aka Jeff. I like his videos. Um, we certainly have some similar tastes in music, particularly when it comes to guitar players. Uh, I guess we both seem to like certain aspects of guitar playing that are not popular for everyone. I'm talking about all this uh, stuff that uh, other people would describe as self-indulgent, pretentious masturbation. Um, but um, other people would call it progressive rock or jazz fusion. <laughs> and um, he did a lot of interesting uh, videos uh, that are kind of top 10 of something or a ranking of albums, etc. I have not done that much in that direction and I kind of felt like it, so I thought let's start. And uh, so this is my presentation of my favorite guitar solos. Uh, yeah, the guitar solo obviously a fundamental part of the rock building. At the same time my tastes here might be slightly odd. So um, to some it may be surprising that there is no Richie Blackmore and Jimmy Page or Eric Clapton in my list. Um, but I will dip into that honey jar of rock classics a little bit actually. You will see. Um, yeah, and to make it more interesting uh, the only rule is that only one guitar solo pro artist. And um, while this was kind of set up as a top 10 video. I obviously, obviously failed at that and that's how it became a top 15. But um, that's not surprising, isn't it? So let me pick up the first stack and uh, let's start right away. So these picks are not really ranked in any way, but yeah, there is a bit of a ranking tendency maybe, but I just didn't give it that much thought, so I kind of leave it to you. If you feel like walking through a ranking list, then uh, that's absolutely all right. So um, let's start with number 15, Ambiguity by Terrier Ribdal from his album Chaser, released in 1985. Yeah, this is a playful example of jazz fusion guitar soloing. And uh, quite melodic, uh, intense. Uh, this is a really a great solo and I guess my favorite by Terry Ribdal. Although this is obviously one of those musicians where it's a bit hard to uh, define a best solo. Um, number 14. Adrian Bellew on The Great Curve by Talking Heads from the 1980 album Remain in Light. Experimental. Aggressive, outlandish, groundbreaking wailing and uh, a style of guitar playing that probably no one had heard before in 1980. Number 13, David Gilmour on Echoes by Pink Floyd from the album Metal, released in 1971. Sublime yet Aggressive guitar work, very experimental, very groundbreaking, very atmospheric. Yeah, I might actually manage to create a short video. <laughs> Wouldn't that be something? So, number 13, Bella by Carlos Santana from his solo album Blues for Salvador, released in 1987. Classic Santana solo. Here beautifully moving between the soft and the intense. It took me probably the longest time while compiling this list uh, to pick a solo by Santana. There's just so much to choose from and uh, usually they are all kind of great. And uh, finally I have uh, picked this one here which is probably slightly less known than some uh, other tracks by Santana, but uh, I've always enjoyed this album and uh, particularly this uh, quite fascinating calm track that uh, has this 
increasing level of intensity. Number 12, The Glorious Omriff by Steve Hillich from his album Green, released in 1978. This is a remake of the track Master Builder by Gong from the album You, which uh, Steve Hillich also co-wrote during his time in Gong. So this is a somewhat a upgraded version that is even more feverish and insane and uh, it's kind of like an orgy of solos and uh, an interesting and quite dramatic um, finale to the album. Number 11, The Dark Prince by John McLaughlin on his album Electric Dream from 1979. That's probably what it sounds when McLaughlin doesn't hold back. I can imagine some people find this kind of guitar playing slightly disgusting, but that's only because we are all jealous that we can't play like John McLaughlin. <laughs> <laughs> Number 10, Gary Moore on Nuclear Attack on the Greg Lake self-titled album from 1981. This is a wonderful solo album by Greg Lake uh, that is quite a joy from beginning to the end. And for me, one of the most beautiful examples of uh, Gary Moore's guitar playing. Number 9. Streetwalker by Jan Ackermann. Now this is an interesting choice. Jan Ackermann uh, is a artist that can be quite a riff master while at the same time can play highly complex uh, fusion harmonies. But this here is an example of something completely different and that is his ability to serve the track to serve the composition. So the showing off element here is certainly rather limited. Uh, this is a very atmospheric, uplifting, jazzy song. I would regard this a jazz funk composition. And the next time when I'm in Amsterdam, I will rent a bicycle there and uh, strap a little camera to the bicycle and just drive for one hour through Amsterdam and uh, use the material as a video for this song because uh, every time I'm listening to Streetwalker um, I kind of imagine to be in Amsterdam again on a hot summer day. Wonderful song released on Jan Ackermann's self-titled solo album from 1977. Time for some mayhem. Aldi Meola on The Sorceress by Return to Forever on their 1976 album Romantic Warrior. Yeah, what can I say about Aldi Meola that has not been said already? Um, this is uh, some incredible, almost confusing guitar playing here uh, on an album that is basically insane from beginning <laughs> to the end. <laughs> Number seven, Martin Barr on Aqualunk by Jethro Tull from the 1971 album Aqualunk. Now I think Martin Barr's solo here on this song is uh, part of rock history and in terms of uh, music historical importance probably one of the most important solos in my list here. I've always been a fan of Martin Barr's quite unique guitar style so this is certainly stuff of legends. Number six Steve Howe on Gates of Delirium from the album Relea by Yes, released in 1974. Steve Howe's work on this track is uh, outstanding and uh, an amazing adventurous journey and uh, certainly something that uh, is being analyzed by musicians and by fans alike. Some great aggressive Telecaster playing here bringing somewhat a surf rock twang into the progressive rock jazz fusion genre. Number five, Frank Zappa on Willie the Pimp from the album Hot Rats, released in 1969. 
this album was years ahead of its time and uh, obviously the guitar solo on Willy the Pimp is a great example of uh, this entire Frank Zappa musical philosophy where you find yourself in this gray area where it's up to you to decide if a solo like that is a bit of a spoof or satirical statement influenced by the rise of the contemporaries back in the day like Eric Clapton and uh, Jeff Beck etc. Or if this musical statement is entirely serious. Maybe the answer doesn't matter but uh, what you can hear every second of this very long solo is that Frank Zappa is enjoying himself uh, during this incredible improvisation. Wonderful record and uh, as I said uh, ahead of its time by years. Number four Mick Rogers on Father of Day, Father of Night by the Manfred Mann's Earth Band on their 1973 album Solar Fire. Now this is an incredible solo that uh, is melodic, that is in parts aggressive, in parts experimental, uh, that is beautifully constructed. It's a solo that is less improvisational but more an integral part of the entire composition. It has a very cinematic dimension and uh, quite a beautiful tone somewhere between psychedelic rock, prog rock and hard rock. An epic solo. Number three. Jeff Beck, Come Dancing, on the album Wired from 1976. Now the track was penned by Narada Michael Walden, so this is funky and very groovy. But at the same time, the solo is extremely tasteful and certainly an example of one of the greatest guitar players of the blues rock genre here uh, with an album that was a, a step much deeper into jazz fusion. So Wired, Jeff Beck with uh, Jan Hammer on keyboards. And uh, number two, Ian Bernson on games People Play by the Alan Parsons Project from their 1980 album Turn of a Friendly Card. Now Ian Bernson is a very melodic, very tone-oriented guitar player, creating solos that uh, just stick with you because they are just so refined and so precise and so perfect and a very melodic and uh, something that uh, you keep humming somewhere in the back of your mind. On many occasions uh, Ian Bernson is the example, the perfect example of this lead guitarist that you use at the end of a song during a fade out. Uh, this is the kind of a guitar player where you keep turning up the volume of the song in the finale so you can kind of grab some more tones coming from his guitar. Um, the solo on games people play is very short, but uh, what a masterpiece. Uh, it's actually recorded with two different guitars on two different takes and kind of combines two different styles of playing at the same time um, in a wonderful blend between a rather hard double lead style and uh, kind of funky, funky syncopated guitar. Just check it out, it's an amazing solo. And finally, number one, Alan Holdsworth on Hazard Profile Part 1 by Soft Machine, released on their 1975 album Bundles. This is not only incredible shredding, but also such a highly harmonic drama that is unfolding in this guitar solo. It's an exciting, pleasant experience. Yeah, and uh, certainly any kind of Alan Holdsworth solo guitar playing is what I personally would call my acoustic happy space. And uh, that closes uh, my list and this video. I hope you have liked this and uh, of course I'm aware that I have missed and left out many big names and probably some highly important guitar solos and 
it's a completely subjective game and uh, it was never the task to pick 15 best whatever best means solos in the world uh, that's something i would not do it's more like what are the 15 solos that uh, i love and enjoy and find great and uh, that obviously doesn't change the fact that if i did this list in a year some things could be different so uh, have a nice day take care stay healthy and uh, see you next time goodbye